Hello everybody, I, I'm just going to make this quick video to show you about how to actually use the new Knack Sport Scout Plus Hockey template that we've created for you alongside the dashboard. It's available to use for free, all you need to do is email info at analysispro.com and we'll send both files over for you, ready for you to get started and analyse a game. So I wanted just to start off by showing you this is a template here. And you've got a selection of buttons available which will behave in different ways which I'm going to tell you about which you click when you want to clip or timestamp or code the events going on on your video playback window here and what I'm going to do I'm going to open up the dashboard so the dashboard accompanies the template and to open up the dashboard you select this icon here the graph and what you'll need to do is use this icon to import the file into your list of dashboards here. So you press this file, you can import it in. You can see that I've done that here. This is the dashboard that accompanies this template. So it's completely empty at the moment. We haven't pressed anything on our template. Um, so we're ready now to, to start clipping, to start tagging. And the data that's entered in the template here it's going to populate over onto this dashboard here. You're also creating a timeline, of course, to build presentations from as well within that sport. But I just want to show you how these actually work together. So we'll start off with these at the top. Now, Q1, 2, 3, and 4, um, first and second, these are really important in, way, in the way of how the dashboard will work because it's set up in a way that it's going to be pulling through the data from this graphic descriptor and populating the actual placement of the actions on these pitch graphics here. And I split these into two halves. The first half, the 25 and circle entries and the first half shots, and the second half, 25 and circle entries and the second half shots. So in order for the dashboard to know what half we're in, we need to make sure we tell it by activating the correct auto descriptors which are going to automatically add what bit of the game we're in so depending on how you set up your hockey game you may use quarters or just halves but whatever you do right click and activate q1 obviously if it's the first quarter and activate the first half if it's the first half and deactivate the others so now anything we add using our template the dashboard here is going to know what bit of the game that we are in. So that's the first thing to do. So to change those, right click, activate, right click, deactivate. It's important these are done in order for this to work properly. So that's the auto descriptors on this row here. Secondly, on this row, we're going to come to possessions. These are manual mode category buttons. The manual mode category buttons work in a way where they record the time data that they're on for or active for. So if I play the video now and I press the possession button, you can see that it shades. That means it's on or open. And I can now press team B if the possession changes. It's not actually matching the video here, but I'm just showing you as an example. And then just say it changes back. It's recording the time data and the amount of times that the teams were in possession for. So you can come here onto this dashboard now and you can see that the dashboard's creating calculations and showing us the possession data for both teams. So that's the manual mode buttons. Escape will turn those off, um, handy if the ball went out of play, for example. And you can also use hotkeys to turn these on and off as well if you find them easier. So I'm just pressing O there as a hotkey. I can press P now and it will turn one button on and turn the other one off. They won't be on together again escape will turn those off so hotkeys can be applied to any buttons feel free to do that if you find that easier so then manual mode category buttons the next buttons are the predefined category buttons and i've set these as our 25 entry and our circle entries so it's going to count the amount of times we enter the 25 and the amount of times we enter the circle by pressing them you can see it's going to count that and you can see there, I press 25 entry, so you can see a one appear on the dashboard here, and the same for the opposition on both sides. The same for the circle entries as well. But what we want to know now is not only how many, we want to know where we entered it on each part of uh, 
each bit of the um, pitch graphic. So if we go to uh, 25 entry now, we click there and we can go over to that entry point. We can click and plot on the pitch graphic and there you can see an orange cross has gone on the um, on our pitch graphic here and you can see that that's displayed there on that first half side as a 25 entry. So if I do it again, I go in the center and then I do it again and go over on the left, you can see that there, that each of those plots, each of those 25 circle entries have come through on the dashboard on the graphic descriptor. We can do the same here for circle entries. So we can do that and we can click there and exactly the same principle for the 25s and now we're in the circle entries and they're displaying on the graphic descriptor on the dashboard as well. Exactly the same with Team B. So we'll say they're shooting this way, 25 entries. There you go on there, you can see those displayed and circle entries. Okay, so now if we wanted to, and we were gonna move halves and we want to display it on here, we can right click and activate the auto descriptor for the second half and deactivate for the first half. And now when I go to the 25 entry, you can see that it's displaying over on this side. And that works the same for our position and the circle entries, of course. So I'll just change these back. So I'm gonna right click, activate first half and deactivate second half. And now what we're gonna do is look at the shots. So the shots uh, work the same way of these. They're predefined category buttons. They're gonna clip a duration of time that you set. And if you do want to uh, change the setting on how long it clips for, just go over to behavior and you can change the settings that clip for on there. So you just use the plus and minus. It's going to click the uh, pre time before you click and also some time after on the post. So set those there. So this is a 15 second clip, 10 seconds before and five seconds after. If I press the shot now, it's going to uh, code the same as 25 and circle did. And now I can add different descriptors to that shot. So do I want to know that it was on target? So if it was on target, I can press on target and I can go over to my pitch graphic now and say where that shot happened. So now you can see here on my first half shots, you can see that our shot is displaying on the graphic descriptor using the descriptor on target from there. If I do that again and I go off target, you can see now next to the on target plot, you can see it's off target with a cross. So that would work exactly the same over on the opposition side. So you use the descriptors on off target. Of course, if it was a goal, you'd go on target and then goal. Okay, the next couple of buttons I'll just show you quickly before we move on to PCAs, where PCAs are gonna work slightly differently. The button up here is called PB Pushback. This is the start of the game. It's really handy if you are using the Tag and View app if you want to find that starting point of the game, if you want to sync up the codes, uh, do find our resources on those. And also I've got a special button in here, just say someone plays a really amazing through ball and you definitely want to clip it, click special and it's gonna create its own line in the analysis. So it's not necessarily to do with this dashboard, but just something you know you want to look at as a coach. Okay, we're gonna come on to PCAs now. So the PCA is actually a manual button, similar to the setup of the uh, possession buttons where you decide how long they last for and how long you're clipping for, because other things may happen in the PCA, such as a shot. So for example, if I was to press PCA now, you can see that it shades as the possession does. And what we would do if there was a shot, you would click team a shot, and then you would show the outcome of the shot. And the outcomes of the shots are going to be living within inside the PCA category because that's on and the shot because that was the last pressed. So if I went on target and a goal, and we'll use uh, this side just uh, for clarity, we can press that on the, um, on, the, on the circle and you can see that that shot there is shown that was on target and a goal. Now, when you finish adding your descriptor, just simply click the PCA button again and it will turn it off. So you would go PCA, shot, 
on target goal and click the graphic descriptor and then turn the PCA button off. So that's what you need to do. Manual mode button, what happened with the PCA? Add the descriptors and go up and add your plot on your graphic descriptor. Okay, so that's the PCA and you've got other descriptors here as well. So if it was, of course, a turnover or breakdown, you can click those and they'll live with inside that PCA button or that PCA category. Quite simply, you've got the next buttons, which are scores to simply hit the scores. And you can see that those will populate up there. Let's give ourselves uh, another one there. So we're winning two one. The next things are team A outlets or team B outlets. So we deem that to you to make the decision whether they were successful or unsuccessful. So say team A outlet successful, team A outlet unsuccessful. You can see that on here, the data as it is with everything else populating in that central column there. Uh, same with corners, quite self-explanatory left, center, or right. So team A long corner left, you can see that that populates there. And also with penalties, quite simply, it's a goal for us and team B would put no goal. So you can see that the penalty information is coming through. So the final thing to point out is these uh, shots here. You can see that it was actually uh, it was making a count of the shots that I clicked and it's showing how many shots we had, uh, whether they were on target and off target. So you can visually easily see those there. If I just give you an example, I can press shots. You can see that goes up to five and on target. If I went to opposition shot, you can see that goes to one and on target as well. So one and one. If the data doesn't come through, all you need to do is double click on the background. It will load and it will refresh the dashboard. So these dashboards are an absolutely ideal way for you to see the game in numbers. They're actually dynamic as well. So if you wanted to actually watch that, uh, to, uh, that score there, you press the two and it will play the video actually back. You can watch them there. So an amazing presentation tool. Um, amazing for post game analysis, post game review, but also live in game. You can use this streaming tool here. Uh, do look at our resources on that. You can live stream the dashboard and some video clips during the game to the bench. Uh, there's also a dynamic dashboard, so you can go to actually which part of the game that you want to. So you can refresh it to display the data within a spe specific specified section of the time that you're interested in. And you can save the dashboard as a JPEG if you want to. And there's various other tools for you to use. So that's been a quick recap of the template that we've created for you for use in Scout Plus with Hockey with the accompanying dashboard. I hope you enjoy. Thank you very much for watching.